Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is a tremendously exciting day for me because, well, one, it's Friday. It's almost the weekend. Happy Friday to you all, but back in. Diving into the rest of Icon's latest release with an album listed for the Takeoff Studio Length album. Very much excited for it because two reasons. One, I very much enjoyed the music they released from this era already, whether it be you know, the pre-release Tantara or the title track You, which we checked out yesterday. It has been such a fun time. And two, it's my very first Icon album. Icon, I've known about as a group, and I've listened to a couple of their title tracks in the past, a handful of their title tracks in the past, and I've playlisted on a couple of them, but I've never listened to it on Icon B-side before. Very exciting indeed. You know, it's kind of like, like Baby's first fill-in-the-blank, my ba Baby's first Icon album, and I'm so excited for it. I don't know what to expect, in all honesty, but here we go, transition over. We're on Spotify today, um, which is the fact that this album is rather fresh, and finding reliable lyric videos is something that I really tend to focus on. So, for reference, I've had a couple of pretty crappy experiences with incorrect, like, color-coded lyric videos, and they've driven me nuts. Especially since this is a group that I eventually want to learn the actual members' names and things like that. So we're going to just keep it on Spotify and just run through. Um, we're going to skip you and Tantara just for time constraints because this is a long album already. So we're going to start with Rum Pum Pum, but I do wish we had accurate color-coded lyric videos and things like that, but I'm not going to make too big of a fuss about it. One day I will learn the icon members. I know two of them. I know Bobby, because we checked out his solo stuff, and I know Chang Wu, or Chan, because he was in uh, My Chilling Roommate with Solon. Those are the only two Icon members I know, and I barely know any of their music, so it's going to be very exciting times indeed. Uh, typical album listen rules. If you want to skip ahead to a certain song, time on below is going to be chapter based of what we're listening to. If you're in a, for the long haul like me, welcome on board. Let's get started with song number one, Rum Pum Pum. we got composition credits over here on the side, so I'm going to read off of those now. Pum Pum Pum, lyrics by Bobby, composed by Bobby, don't hit the proof, Millennium, arranged by Millennium and the Proof. Here we go. Traditional instruments? Okay. Get EDM with it one time. Oh. Oh, hold up. Why is this beat so hard? Oh my god. What a good way to start the album, I'm listening off, eh? Take it down for the halftime. Okay. Let the rapper shine a little bit. Oh, the pacing of this beat is nuts. And it's the traditional instrumentation that does for me. I love it when a pop song combines traditional instrumentation. Thing interlude they added for the bridge. Mm -hmm. 
letting the traditional instrument shine a little bit. What a spectacular way to start off the album listen oh my goodness first of all i do like this edm path that we've got on here like i love the edm vibe of you and how you was very much like an electro like you know kind of festival type vibe rum pum pum has just taken that edm vibe and gone a completely separate direction with it and i love it two the traditional instrumentation. Oh, I love that traditional instrumentation got involved with this. It's it doesn't really matter what part of the world the traditional instrumentation is from. If there's traditional instrumentation included in any pop song, I am going to love it. I love the extra little bit of flair that traditional instrumentation had to music. Because it's something that you can replicate, but you can't really capture that specific essence of if you do it digitally through like a fake sound sample or you try and like mimic it using different instruments. No, no, no. By using like that, tr specifically the traditional instruments, it adds a nice separate little flair to it. And the fact that the motif that the traditional instruments are playing is then recreated in the chorus using synthesizers in a purposely like synthetic way i think it's so clever because it keeps the instrumentation of the song consistent but it's very stylistically clear that those two phrases are meant to be treated differently you know the verse and the chorus but man this beat has no business going this hard oh my goodness good start let me tell you let me tell you indeed Okay, next up, like a movie. Lyrics by Juno, Bobby, Ju Juno. Um, assuming is the same for uh, Juno here. Bobby composed by Juno, Kanguk Jin, arranged by Kanguk Jin. I'd love to point out, love seeing members get involved with their music project, and especially with this group. Three different members getting involved. Yeah, Bobby Dongguk and Juno. That's cool. Love that. All right, like a movie. Okay, bring down the energy a little bit. It's a slower song, but it does have the potential to kind of explode at any moment. Nope, they're holding it back. Okay. I like the build in this pre-course though. Ooh, or is this technically the chorus? Ooh. Keep the high notes. That was the chorus. Interesting. I like it. I love that the rappers is slowly straying from the meter and then going back into it. It's got a nice like, casualness to it. Oh my goodness. Oh, 
I love how exposed those high notes are. You really feel them. Shit, the vocal top line for this song is really exposed. It's very far forward in the mix, I like it. Contrasting that high note with the low, wispy tone. I like it. Final course was really cool. It's almost haunting in a way. The way uh, the like ad libs and the background vocals just kind of just appear out of nowhere, and the way they reverberate over the song is really cool. Ooh, quite like that. It's got one of those sounds where you listen to it, and it kind of feels it sits somewhere between what I would classify as a ballad and an anthem. Like it's got the pace of an anthem, it's got kind of the emotions of a ballad, but it's, ni it's neither of them, and I kind of like that, it's very unique. I also like the fact that it's coming after the first three songs, Yu, Tantara, and Rumpa Pum are very high energy songs, so I quite like that Like a Movie is placed here, just you know, it can kind of you know calm the listener down a little bit if they're going through the entire album like that and the vocals too oh i don't know who's soaring up there on the mega high vocals but that was really cool all right next song driving slowly lyrics by bobby composed by bobby and the proof uh arranged by the proof exact same team who did you Ooh. if it's going to be something like you i'm going to i reckon i'm going to enjoy this so here we go driving slowly Okay, it's a little bit chill. I kind of like this chilly game vibe so far. Keep that build going. I'm liking it. It's like a reinterpretation of like the tropical house genre. I like it. This pre-course is so well read. Brief moment of musical silence to bring in the bridge. Nice. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. 
Again, it's a brief moment of musical silence. Nice. I think I mentioned it in the MV reaction when we watched you, but Icon, at least based off of this era alone, really know how to transition between musical phrases. Like, even with the brief moments of musical silence and driving slowly, this song was predictable. It was f easy to follow, and it's really easy to just listen to it because there's nothing that feels like... Oop. You know how when you put, like... A puzzle together you have pieces that go you know they're supposed to fit together but sometimes you find a piece that looks exactly what you need like exactly what you need but it's just a little bit different and you only realize it once you get to the end of the puzzle and you see a piece that doesn't fit and they have to go and spend the next you know like three hours trying to find the piece that that one is supposed to be at has anyone ever run into that experience but regardless think of that as like music Music as like a jigsaw puzzle where you put pieces together and they all they all fit together fine, but there are some that just fit better than others. And what Icon have done with this album so far, like we're five songs in on the album, and every single song has had such clean transitions, whether it be you know, between pre-chorus and chorus or verse to pre-chorus, bridge to final chorus, whatever it may be, even with the little like pauses that you get in driving slowly with the musical silence. The transitions are so well written that all, every single song just flows so well. It's so, it's really impressive, honestly. So I like this little chill block that we've got. Like a movie and driving slowly, it's nice. It's chill, but it's not like lulling you to sleep chill. It's a nice, like, sunset drive down the highway with your hand waving out the window with the wind. With draft, that kind of vibe. I like it. Next up. Never forget you. Lyrics by Dong Hyuk and Bobby. Composed by Dong Hyuk, Kang Hyuk Jin, Diggy. Arranged by Kang Hyuk Jin and Diggy. Cool. A four minute song? It is. Oh, we got a sentimental ballad. Wailing guitar. It's very ballady so far. A little bit. There's the release. I'm glad they didn't decide to double time it all the way. to the pre-chorus. Again, slick transition.
Yeah, I like that. You get the build from the doubling percussion part, but you don't get it the entire way, and then you're back into the bass beat again. Draw up that re entry. Oh, what a pretty ballad. Oh, if you didn't know, I'm a big sucker for a ballad. That gets my seal of approval. Oh, the song soars. Really cool. The way it builds, it's a nice slow flourish. You see it blow up, and then the release happens, and it's a nice release of emotions rather than just a release of energy. I like that's so cool. That a little electric guitar inclusion at the end. Ooh, tasty, tasty, tasty. Oh, now this middle block of the album is great. Like a movie, driving slowly, never forget you. These three songs to just kind of bring bring the album back down a little bit. I love it. And the thing is, like, never forget you is probably. Or at least up until this point, the most ballady type song on the album so far. But it's hard. it's aggressive for a ballad. It's loud for a ballad, but I love it. It reminds me of like a modern interpretation of what '80s power ballads used to be. That's like my favorite type of ballad. It's an, is a power ballad from the 1980s. This gives me very similar vibes of that. Nice. All right. Last group song all the way here. Lyrics by Don Hook and Bobby. Oh, it's literally the exact same composition team as Never Forget You. Sick. Love to see it. All right. Next. <laughs> The song got dry. It still got legs. You feel the energy building in the background still. This was not the direction I thought this would go. Okay. I like it. There's. It kind of reminds me of Mama Moose as a windflower. But like an EDMified version of it, and I kind of like it. Boy, I'm 
And I love that even though it is a very electronic heavy song, you're getting acoustic guitars in it. That's really cool. Oh, we're getting some pulsing piano now for the bridge as well. Oh. oh, nice little chromatic descent. Gentle re-entry. Hold off the full drop. That was cool. Bring it in one step at a time. I love that. It it really does feel like this entire album just went full circle from you to all the way here. I love that. I love that it's like an entire loop of EDM music that we've gone from. We've gone from the really bright party opener, the aggressiveness of Tan Dada and Rum Pum Pum, bring it back down a little bit with like a movie driving slowly, go all smooth, it, never forget you, and then kind of liven up to get ready for the finale with All The Way Here. It really is just one long adventure. And I love it. It's really well organized. And the song too, All The Way Here. I can't... Something about the kind of like twinkling guitar and the melody just reminds me of that Mamamoo song. If you know the song, you know the song. I forget if it is called Windflower or not off the top of my head, but it reminds me of that song that's been like remixed into it, like an EDM version. And it's really cool. I like it. It's got a really nice, almost breeziness to it. Like it's kind of a delicate EDM song, but it's still got the kind of aggressiveness and the hardness that you want from like an EDM song. But it's still very gentle and very melodic, and I really like that balance. Oh, these seven group songs really good. I'm really enjoying this album already. The fact that like this is how I got to experience Icon for the first time. I'm quite enjoying my adventure. Now I know we have three more, um, three more songs to go, like members solos. I'm gonna take a brief moment to stock up on water, go to the bathroom, and things like that before we finish the album. So give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Okay. And we're back. Here we go. We've got three more songs on the album to go. You've got Fighting, solo by Mr. Song. Um, I don't actually know what it is, so apologies for that. But, um, the song is called Fighting. Uh, remember, uh, according on, on the Reddit post, it's listed as Yoon Young. I don't actually know. I'm assuming one's like a stage name that he goes by now, one is his real name that he used to go by, or something like that, but Hiding. Uh, lyrics by LP, Sunny, Lil G, and I? Uh, composed by LP, Sunny, Lil G, uh, arranged by LP. So, looks like this is the only song that doesn't have a member involved with any of the writing parts. Interesting. Okay. Here we go. Trop? 
Okay, this is not what I expected on this album. I love it. Unironically, this might be one of my favorite pieces I've ever done. It's so good. cheeks hurt from smiling so much oh. <laughs> here's the thing i don't know how popular trot music is you know amongst like the typical like i what are what are icons fans called iconics but i don't know how popular trot is amongst like my age demographic you know the 20s and like the early 30s because I feel like I'm a bit of an outsider when it comes to trap music, because I quite unironically like trap music. This is spectacular. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. Like, this is exciting. This is energetic. It's addictive. It's the type of music that really gets you wanting to sing along with it. I love it. Oh, I want, I want to listen to that again for the first time, like... That was such a refreshing and almost like transcending experience for me. Oh. Yeah, legitimately, like the backs of my cheeks hurt from smiling so much during that. Oh my. That was spectacular. Okay, next up Kiss Me by DK. Okay, we've got lyrics by Dong Hyuk, composed by Dong Hyuk, uh, Kangook Jin, Diggy, and Glowing Dog, arranged by Kangook Jin, Diggy, Glowing Dog, Where the Noise, and Siri. Here we go. Oh. 6 8 hell yeah 
has life that. It's got a nice, almost bluesy swing to it. I think in terms of the composition might be the most musically intricate one that we've had so far purely down to that mix meter that's throughout the song that's so cool it's very bluesy and I quite like that I like a lot of different genres of music you know whether it be trot or EDM or blues or pop or rock or orchestral music acapella choir church choral music things like that i like a wide range of music but bluesy music for me has always been really fun to follow along with because it's doing a lot of interesting things with rhythms that you typically wouldn't get in pop it's got a nice swing to it and a swing you often get from stuff like six eight time and things like that where it's that 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 there's like a little bit of a lilt to it and you get typically get little like beat lilts like that on bass threes or odd number uh bass measures. It's really interesting because we got both. We got standard meter and six eight meter in this song, and I think it was really cool. Because a six eight really gives it that bluesy swing in the verses. But once you get to the chorus, it's very straightforward. Just one, two, three, four. And it's that parallel running those two in conjunction with each other but neither of them feel out of place and again it's showing off just how well icon are able to produce transitions in between their musical phrases like it's not exclusive to their group stuff as well it's evident in their solo stuff now and i think that's so cool but final song on the album want you back uh juno or june solo Lyrics by Juno, composed by Juno, choice 37 on the I, or He, however you pronounce that, and arranged by choice 37 and the I. So here we go, last song. Oh, oh, oh. oh. smooth with it. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, babe. 네가 없는 이곳. I want you back. Don't want you to get so, want you to get so. We got a really nice color. Very unique vocal color. I just wanna know, yeah. I miss you, babe. When I know you miss you, so beautiful. 내가 제일 못했다는 말은 이제 와 너무 늦어버렸겠지만, I just want you to come back to me, baby. I got to let it let it inside out. Inside out. He's got a wide range in terms of tones that he can sing in. Really cool. Especially you get that nice gentle little interlude and now he's almost got like a rocker gritty voice here. really nice that's a really nice way to end the album it's a little bit low key at least compared to the other songs in the album it's a little bit lower energy it does the same effect as what putting a ballad at the other day of the album does it's a nice way to like kind of bring it back down you know really interesting voice lots of different voices you know, you've got like especially once he puts a power into it on the choruses it almost like he had like a buzz in his tone that Feel like you get on um, rockers or like rock groups frontmen or vocalists i think that was really cool especially because it was preceded with that really gentle delicate it's he's got such an interesting voice and he starts off the song in such a low register it, you can hear in the ad libs that he's got a really low one that almost pushes like subharmonic levels of low and i think that's so cool oh this entire album was so fun. Oh my goodness. Okay. I know there's six members, right? There's Song DK and Juno. Oh. I know there's Chun and Bobby, and there should be one more member that I don't know the name of. Or, by process of elimination, there's one more member. Because I think I can't have six. They were one of the few groups where we could get every single person on the thumbnail. Because we did a pre-release, the MV, and the album. Two people on the thumbnail per, that's six people, that should cover everybody. But who's the last person that we're missing here? Because this kind of reminds me of what Dreamcatcher do with Apoc Apocalypse Save Us, where we had like the first half of the album was group stuff and then finish the album with member solos i wish we had all six members or if not all six then maybe because i know bobby just recently had a solo release so maybe like 
get the other five members on a solo track for an album or something. I don't know. I wish we got more. Because I feel like I learned a little bit more about the members individually through the solo tracks. Especially Song. Hello, Mr. Trot. Did not expect that to hear Trot music today, but I'm so happy because of it. <sighs> okay. Um, This was brilliant. This was very much enjoyable. The title track is great. I'd love to pre-release. Rum Pum Pum was an ex whole ass experience. And we kind of tone it back down. Like a movie, Drive, Never Forget You. One, two, three. Those one, two, three, really nice. Then use all the way here to kind of pick up the energy a little bit. And then freaking fighting comes on and... Rada. You got fighting and then you got kiss me. You get a little bit bluesy with it. You take it a little bit even slower again with Want You Back. And it's just... It's a really nice, well-rounded album. Lots of high energy, a little bit of the mellow stuff, a little bit of slower, really quick stuff as well, high intensity stuff. And it's just a really good time. It really is just a good time. And I very much enjoyed it. As my first ever Icon album, I very much enjoyed it. Hopefully you did as well. Hopefully YouTube Content ID does as well, because um, dealing with copyright can be a mess TM. But... That is it for me today. Thank you all for watching along with me if you've made it this far. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether that be you know, checking in with your friends and family, picking up a piece of trash off the street, holding the door open for somebody when you're out. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten someone else's day today. And know that if you are ever going through a rough period of your life, no matter where you are in the world, just know that even though at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, that I'll always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.